what channel wants in Nigeria? You've seen the headlines, you've heard the speeches. Nigeria is building more roads, increasing its energy bank, and more railways, all thanks to, to China. But behind every handshake, behind every developmental project, not just in Nigeria, there is a story untold, a story buried in between the lines. Imagine those days before a nation takes over another nation. It has to be through a war. But these days, it's just the stroke of a pen. Imagine waking up one day to find out that your ports, your railways, your oil fleets are all being owned and controlled by a foreign nation. That sounds like a fiction, right? It's happening now. While the Nigerian government has accused the Chinese company named Zhongshan Fucheng Industrial Investment of staging a campaign to seize its assets overseas, including presidential jets, the seizure includes a newly acquired Airbus A330 or A30, 330 valued at over $100 million. But this didn't happen overnight. After gaining independence, Nigeria, like many African nations, wants rapid growth. We need jobs, road, bridges, sports, everything to prepare us forward. However, traditional loan from the IMF and the World Bank came with impossible condition and the economic restriction that strangles our roots. Then came China, offering something different. Loans without the typical strings attached, roads, railways, everything we need to make us a great nation. But here is a catch. Why these project leaders, the real winners are not Nigerian. Who are they then? They are Chinese companies, Chinese workforce and the Chinese government. And Nigeria is left to pay the bills. When China invests in these projects, they often send over Chinese workers to Africa to fill all the best positions. And even when Africans are employed, they're treated differently, sometimes even segregated from the Chinese workers. This loan, they look good on the surface, like no strength attached, right? But dig deeper, and you will see that they are trapped, often not recognized by African leaders. Beijing may engage in what critics characterize as debt trap diplomacy, lending designed to force countries into handing over land, minerals, and strategic assets when they default on a loan. To build this Belt and Road Railroad with Chinese loans, Kenya agreed to apply Chinese law inside Kenya and give up East Africa's largest port. You see, why do West ask for repayment of their loans in dollars and reform? The Chinese came with a different game when Nigeria or any country defaults on their loans. This could happen. China's recently been accused of trying to take over Uganda's sole international airport if the East African country fails to pay a $200 million loan for the expansion of the site. At this rate, if Uganda fails to repay the loan, Uganda's only international airport will soon be a Chinese asset. That sounds like some years ago, right? Coupled with the new relationship with Africa and China, that might not happen, but it's already happening. Let's take the Lagos Ibadan railway projects. Nigeria secured about $1.5 billion loan from China Amazon Bank in 2017. Imagine our completion. Nigeria couldn't pay for this loan. China may not ask for the money. They could come for the assets by mounting target on the assets or going after some Nigeria holdings in the foreign country. It's like borrowing money to buy a car. But if you miss a payment, you don't just lose a car, but you lose your entire garage. The trillion dollar historical question yet unanswered is, apart from China's ambition to project itself as a leader of the global south in Africa, why is China here in Nigeria? Is it about helping Nigeria develop or is it about something bigger? Large African infrastructure projects would be viewed as risky by any traditional bank and would therefore struggle to get financed, but China's Export-Import Bank doesn't care. This bank will give low interest or no interest loans to African countries so they can build these trains or dams or other projects. China touts the fact that their foreign investment and aid is no strings attached, with no requirements on factors like respect of human rights or democratic elections. The truth is, it is more than just infrastructures, it is about influence, access to raw material and secure future markets. Over the last several decades, China has been pumping resources into Africa. The country has invested hundreds of billions of dollars across the continent, ranging in everything from transportation and infrastructure to real estate and technology. But Let's make no mistake, this isn't for charity. It is a calculated move to secure economic dominance, especially in key nations like Nigeria, to place its mark as a global power. In this era, building more alliance is strategic in the key to take meet the West. You see, controlling resources and infrastructures means controlling supply chain, trade routes, and market access. Nigeria, with its rich oil reserve and growing population, is a critical piece in China's global economic strategy. This isn't about Nigeria, but Africa. The question now is, why? The US and Europe want to dominate Africa, extracting resources and setting the rules. Now, China has a new playbook, one that is harder to dictate, but not so hard to dictate. 
I guess, influence. There is empirical evidence that China has been using these infrastructure investments to affect worldwide politics. We do not interfere in the internal affairs of African countries, impose our will on African countries, or attach any political conditions on economic aid. China still remains politically neutral, but it comes with hidden costs, control over African future. For now, as Watini is the only African nation still recognizing Taiwan as a nation, how did they make African leaders switch? They employ the power of law. If you add on to one China ideology, you get more financial support. If you vote in line with China in the United Nations General Assembly, you get more aid. It's now clear that when you owe China money, your international stance begins to change. Well, that's not new. The big nation like the US used this during the Cold War. So where does that leave Nigeria? Can we break free from this foreign influence or we've gone too far? One thing is certain, foreign loan or hate are not for charity. And if we don't start paying attention, we could be leasing out our country one asset at a time. The real question isn't whether we can afford to repay this loan. It's whether we can afford to lose control of our future. If this video opened your eyes, share it. Let's keep the conversation going because the future of Nigeria and Africa depends on it.